Well, hello, everyone. We are so excited. And today we have Lisa Richard Hernandez, and she is the owner and broker of View Properties. She actually is in multiple locations. She's in Charleston, South Carolina. She's also in Hilton Head. She's going to be expanding out to Nashville, Tennessee. So she has a unique market because she does RV lots in Hilton Head. She also does an RV resort outside of Nashville, Tennessee, Tennessee that she's opening up. So she's got some exciting things going on. So Lisa, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. So talk about how did you get into selling luxury RV lots? Because that, talk about niche. That is about as niche as it gets. How did you even get into that? Well, it's actually kind of an interesting story, to be honest. Um, my husband and I, a couple of years, actually, like around 2018, bought our first motor coach. And uh, we live in Charleston, South Carolina. And there's a luxury RV resort down in Hilton Head, which is just about two hours south of us. So um, we decided, well, let's go check out this resort. It's only two hours away. And instantly you go into realer mode when you get there. The lots originally, like five years ago, were $60,000 a piece. And I said, man, in Hilton Head Island, right in the middle of all this, you couldn't get like a piece of land to have a beach house or anything. Like we should look at these RV lots. Well, long story short, of course, we waited and we didn't buy them. We weren't sure what we wanted to do. And prices just kept going up. And I would see people improving them and and reselling them. So after about we got a we ended up upgrading our motor coach to an, to a bigger, newer coach. And our friends and the we were renting in there. We decided to buy our first lot. And then our friends in there weren't weren't happy with the the options that were available for the current realtors in there. Not really anyone knew how to sell those lots in there. So long story short, I opened my brokerage down there in February of 2020. <laughs> so then everything shut down, of course. However, the RV market really fared well over COVID. So they had just an extreme amount of sales. Um, long story short, now we're selling RV lots in there. We've been doing it for two years. Um, I have an agent that lives down there inside the gate. She she sold six and a half million dollars worth of RV lots last year. They sell for two hundred and fifty. To we just had a three hundred and sixty thousand dollars sale. It's a forty by sixty parking pad um, with pavers on it that you park your motor coach at. So that kind of became our little niche market. And um, I have a podcast called RV Podcast. It's a letter R V I E W. And um, we talk about all of our travel stories everywhere. My husband and I travel in our motor coach. And uh, Nashville is one of our favorite places to go. And so I had um, a, a guy, his name is Joey Locker, and he started following me on my podcast. And I said, hey, I'm thinking about opening an, uh, another a luxury RV resort outside of Nashville, Tennessee. And I was like, I'm in. Like, I want one. Let me know about it. We kept in touch with each other for over a year. And it's all coming to for, for fruition now. He... uh this came down about a month ago and asked me if I would do all the sales and marketing for his resort that'll be opening up outside of Nashville. So I kind of fell into this niche market. Um, and then because of my podcast and the advertising that I do on there, which is really more of a hobby than it is a business, um, I had another guy contact me outside of Charleston and he's got some land in, in, Nat, um, in North Carolina that's also considering looking. So sort of just came into this market and it really fit for 2020 and in, in, in the whole COVID years and has really sort of worked out. So that's my background that's and how I got there. <laughs> well, I can't stress enough to people of figuring out what your niche is and everyone, it's hard for people to do, but I always give the example of one of my really good friends who was a counselor and she used to see everyone. She was, she if you were, were depressed or if you had an eating disorder or whatever it was, she did everything. And I told her, I said, what do you love the best? And she said, I love working with marriage. And she became just a marriage counselor. That's all she does now. And in the six months, within six months, her business increased by three times because then everyone started referring her to that. So really think in your mind right now of what could be your niche 
And how could you really dial that in? Because I'm telling you, when you do that, it's going to triple X your business. So one of the things that I love that you do, obviously, everyone always asks the question to almost any real estate agent. They say, what is the market doing right now? More than ever, they're asking that. But what you do is you kind of ask them some questions to turn it around to get those people to be potential buyers and sellers. So what do you do exactly? Well, you know, that's a great question, Chantel. The, and I always am training my agents. Like when someone says to you, how's the market? You don't just say, oh, it's great. Thanks. Or it's good. Um, no matter where you at, like you, whether you're in the grocery store and they see your name tag on and they and they're standing there and they say, hey, how is the real estate market? Everybody wants to know that because majority of people are already homeowners or want to be homeowners. So even when I'm having a party and they ask me those questions, it's an opportunity that opens the door to turn that into a lead to continue to stay in touch with. So let's just say, for example, I'm hosting a party and someone asked me, Lisa, how's the market? I don't, my, my next question is, well, that depends. Where, what are you looking to do? Buy, sell, or invest? And then let's just say they say, well, I have a house. I'm not really looking to do anything. I'm just curious. Well, where do you live? And I asked them about their neighborhood. Oh, I live in Park West. Oh, okay. I was just looking in Park West the other day. Um, you know, in overall, in general, our market is, and like right now, I'll say, right now, our inventory is still very, very low. So if you're looking to sell, it's still a good seller's market. And even though our sales are down by 39%, our average price has gone up by 5% still on average over annual in increase in value. So it's still a good investment to, to invest in real estate. How about if I kept you up to date with what's going on in your neighborhood? Would, would that be helpful to you? And, and they would say, yes. And I would, so I'd say, hey, just, you know, text me. Let me, let me text you. You text me back your email address. I'm going to put down Perk West and I'm going to put you on a search. And just once a month, I'll send you whatever's active or whatever's sold in the month. And I'm not going to spam you or anything like that, but let's just keep in touch. And that way you'll be, you know, be able to see what's going on for yourself. And that's a great way to get those people into my lead funnel that didn't even know they were a buyer or seller, right? So now once a month, they're getting from my MLS, all the active listings and what sold, what was. And then they go, well, wow, Joe sold his house for 1.2 million. My house is way nicer than Joe's. I could probably sell mine for 1.5. I'm going to call Lisa and tell her. You know, so um, I think just not discounting what people ask you a question and ask, return their question with more questions, I guess, and draw them into a conversation. Same thing we do with lead conversion over the phone. Um, if someone calls and says, hi, uh, I'm calling about 123 Main Street. You want to say, okay, you know, what can I tell you about that? And they're like, well, I just want to know the price. Okay. Well, even if I'm sitting right in front of my computer, I never go, oh, it's uh, 500000 I never answer that. I'm like, well, just a minute. Let me get closer to my computer and pull that up for you so I can get you that information. Well, I've got you on the phone. Where do you live now? What are you? Are, do you own the house that you live in? What price range are you looking in? Have you already talked to a lender? Do you need to sell your house now to move into another one? Oh, hold on. I've almost got it up. <laughs> and while I'm getting the information from that person, you know, tell me your name again. How do you spell it? Do you use email? All of these questions before I just give them, oh, it's $500,000 and they hang up because they can get that information from anywhere, right? So that's that's kind of my 101 of <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's with, great. With, I want to repeat some of those nuggets that you just said because I think they are really, really good. One is you just talked about wearing a name tag. We we just had a wild, an agent was like, I went to Walmart. I had my, she wears her name tag everywhere. She was like, I went to Walmart. I was standing in line and I got a listing at Walmart for only one reason. I was wearing my name tag. We started talking about real estate. She's like, I kind of feel like it's meant to be because I'm thinking about listing my house. And they got into a conversation and she got that listing. So I think people underestimate wearing that name tag of how important it is. And if every day you just get up and you plan on wearing that, that's a no-brainer. And I loved what you said about when people ask about the market, turning it back around to them and saying, you know, it's really important for you to see 
what's going on in your neighborhood, why don't I just add you to our database where you'll just see if there's a listing coming up on the market, you'll get it, no pressure, but you want to know what's going on in your market and then adding them to the database. And then the third thing I heard you say is I always love to say that while I'm pulling that up, right? So whatever, they always want to know the price. While I'm pulling that up and my computer's being a little bit slow right now, let me ask you a few questions. So let's go over the questions that you 100% want to make sure that you're asking them because, and and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Heather type in the chat right now. We've got a great uh, little script as well where you it's digital and you can always look at it for the questions um, that you might want to ask. But let me ask you, what are the questions that you make sure you ask a seller? And what are the questions you make sure you ask a buyer when they're? So for a buyer, um, the question, I mean, that I ask, you know, right off the bat is, first off, are you working with another realtor? Have you ever talked to someone else? Right. And if they're like, no, we're just just starting our search. I'll say, well, you know, do you have any idea of what price range you might be looking in? And if they say, oh, I want 500000 Oh, okay. Well, have you talked to a lender about that? And, oh, would you be getting financed? Do you need to pay or are you paying cash? And they'll be like, no, we need to get financed. Yes, I've been pre-approved. Or no, I haven't been pre-approved. If they haven't been pre-approved, I ask, would it be helpful if I sent you the name of several different mortgage brokers that may be able to help you? Because in today's market, you definitely want to be pre-approved because things are moving quickly. And, you know, for a buyer to take a seller to take you seriously, you want to have that pre-approval letter. And it's also really hard to show you something that's over your price range and then try to go backwards. Nobody wants to go to first class and then have to move back to coach, right? And then if they have um, their mortgage person, I'll ask, you know, how soon are you looking to move? What's your motivation, right? You want to find out what their motivation is to to buy, how soon they want to move. Do you own a home now? Where do you live? Do you have to sell your home? Um, what things are important to you? Do you uh, do you have children? Are schools important to you? We've got, you know, is is a school district? So you start just just a deep dive into like everything that you want to know about a buyer, because the more you build that relationship, even if it's just your first contact over the phone, they're, there's a million agents that are just going to answer and go, oh, it's 500000 and hang up the phone and, and never, ever really start to build that relationship. And that's where lead conversion is so difficult so many times, I think, is building that relationship over the phone, giving value because everybody has Zillow. Everybody can just look stuff up. They don't need to have you. you got to be the expert on why it's important to use you. And then as far as sellers are concerned, I ask a lot of the same questions. Like, first off, you know, where are you moving to? Why are you moving? And before I go on a listing presentation, a lot of a lot of the agents that I train fail to do this. And I think this is a really big important, but what do you think your home is worth? Right. So, you know, ahead of time, like they think, oh, well, you know, Joe down the street just sold his 1000 square foot house for two million dollars. And I think that my 900 square foot house is worth 2.5 because it's nicer. You know, you've got a big job ahead of you when you go to that listing presentation to explain the comps to them in that market and how things are going and why Joe's house is better than his or isn't or whatever. And maybe they're right on the money, you know, Um, especially in these crazy last couple of years where there's multiple offers on everything. Sometimes I've said, well, let's try it (laughs) because you don't know. But in a normal market, we want to know what their expectations are. Or if it was listed before, have you listed, have you tried to sell it before? Have you done anything? And they'll say, you know, let's just say, oh, if they weren't happy with our other agent, well, what kind of things did you think they didn't do? Get to, don't be afraid to ask the questions, right? Like you want to know all of these things and kind of feel what their personality is like before you meet with them in person to do a listing presentation. And now a word from our sponsor, Canzel Realty. Run your business your way, only at Canzel Realty. You can have all of the freedom with none of the standard real estate red tape. As an agent at Canzel, you'll have the ability to be on a 100% split with no yearly or monthly tech fees. 
you'll get access to revenue share and stock award options, top tier leads program options, access to a local broker in every major city instead of just one for the whole state, a local circle leader to help you and your business, access to incredible national speakers and training, an unmatched suite of free technology, KV Core CRM, BrokerBuck, BrokerMint, and more. At Canzo, you get the best of both worlds. All the technology, revenue sharing, and equity awards of a national firm combined with the close-knit feel and support of a local firm. Build your real estate business your way, only at Canzel Realty. So one of the things that I love about you is you do a lot of organic networking and marketing, and you just, you host so many dinner parties and parties to connect people and almost like pay it forward, if you will. So talk a little bit about what have been the most successful parties that you've done and what you would tell people, listen, do not pass go. You've got to do this. This has been a huge referral source for me. Well, just to give you some history about myself, so this will all make sense. Um, I started, uh, I have a marketing degree from Western Michigan University. I started out in radio and advertising sales. So all I ever did was cold call for years, putting my ex-husband through dental school. And then we started, I knew so many people from all of that networking that we started his dental practice from scratch. After my second kid is when I decided to go into real estate, which was, oh my God, almost 20 years ago now. So right from the beginning, I, I was like, I am not cold calling. All I've done for years is cold calling. I refused to cold call. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to sell a couple homes a year. Well, I sold 22 homes my first year in the business. I was rookie of the year. Um, and never, ever looked back from that. So how did I do that? It was literally all through networking. And my ex-husband, you know, to build a dental practice too, you, you, it's all networking, right? You can do advertising on TV or whatever, and you can get some business from that. But nine times out of 10, all things being equal, people buy because they like you, right? So um, back in my early beginning stages, we used to every year host a Halloween party um, there was 350 people there every year. Um, it, it got to the point where my clients, I would send them like VIP invitations and make stuff for them that was a VIP. So I always never wanted to um, call people and just ask them for business. I, I, I always just felt uncomfortable with that. It was easier for me to say, hey, listen, Susie, I'm having a party on Saturday and I would love for you to come. And then also, you know, and it was top of mind awareness. So 80% of my social media is, is about my personal life and 20% is about my business life. So people always know that I'm a realtor. So we, we, we used to have these big parties and my ex-husband and I said, you know, I never get to talk to anybody when I'm, when I'm doing this. And I, I really want to like make this a smaller, more purposeful event. So we started doing dinner parties and I have a dinner, my dining room table seats, 12 people. And I would, and I, I just started this last year and had one of like I kind of got lost from that for a little while and I just started it up again last year. I had my highest year in sales um to date that I've had and I and I I was very purposeful about it. It was all about last year my word was reconnecting. So I would take and invite 12 people, five other couples. My husband and I was the other two. And I would say, okay, you know, I know Joe is an HVAC guy. Here is this is my contractor and they could be successful in business together, or this is my, um, or putting, basically putting people together that helped each other's businesses and didn't necessarily know each other. And when I came to the dinner table and I would, be, I would send the invitation out and I would say, it's a, din it's a private dinner party for 12 people. And we're, we're like, I would, I would send them and let them know what my menu was going to be ahead of time. But when I got to the dinner table, I would say, you know, like my whole purpose for this year, I would tell them what my purpose was. The whole purpose for this year is to reconnect with my people. And all of you here have something that you share in common. And that's why I chose you all to be together. And it got to the point where people would be like, wonder why I'm invited. <laughs> you know, and when am I going to get invited? And they would look at my social media and say, did she get invited? And I didn't get invited yet. But it was putting people together that could help each other out. And it, when you give to other people and that grows their business, they want to give back to you. And I was very purposeful about saying, like my purpose here is to connect everybody and to help you and your businesses. And I hope that you will help me because this has been you know, a challenging market with a shortage of inventory. And I want to be top of mind awareness for you people, you know, and you're my friends. 
and I, I value your friendship. And people are thankful for that. And they do. They just, they, I might have a party and, or, or be out socially and I might have three other friends that are realtors there. And I know that my friends are going to come to me and call me because Lisa's always giving back. So it's very, it, I would say the dinner parties is probably my most successful networking because people feel really thankful that you did that. And how often do you get invited to dinner at somebody else's house, right? Like, I never get invited anywhere. <laughs> and you have to realize that not everybody is comfortable doing that, but you don't have to really make it difficult. Like, people are invited, happy to be invited over for a spaghetti dinner. Like, it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be steak and lobster, you know? Even to say, I'm having this many people. So we do several big events every year. This we have it's called George's Bad Santa Birthday Party. It's in December. Everybody dresses up and we have about a hundred people. And then I just started, uh, this is our second year. We did a so my single friends all were like, we never get invited to dinner because we're single and we haven't had any, you know, we don't have someone to come with us. So you don't invite us to, to dinner parties. And I thought, all right. I'm going to do an event for just singles. And what I did was, it's called Matchmakers and Singles Brunch. And so um, it's great for me to grow my sphere of influence. Um, if you're married or a couple, you have to bring a single friend with you. And if you're single, you're welcome to come. And then you can, we hope that you'll bring another single friend with you as well. So when the people come in, they have either a red necklace if they're taken or a green necklace if they're single. And I have an icebreaker, a little sheet of paper. Well, every time I do that, I meet and I grow my sphere of influence by 15 or 20 people that are now like, I've been to your house. Like, I'm so thankful you invited me here. My friends brought me in, like people that I never would have known. And then, you know, I take pictures and then I tag them all and add them as friends on my social media. And now I've grown my sphere of influence in a way that's just very organic and normal. And, and people remember me in like a great light. And then in the meantime, they're now on my social media seeing Oh, wow. Lisa's also a very successful realtor. Sure was nice that she invited us. Top of mind awareness, top of mind awareness. I love that. And I will tell you, it sounds like kind of what you're doing is a mini BNI event. You know, BNI is the world's largest referral network. It, uh, they get, you know, they have like one realtor, one loan officer, one this, one that of every group. And it's expensive. It's like $599 for a membership and it's like $199 for an application fee. And it's kind of like what you're doing is you're doing a, a mini BNI meeting in your house and having it for dinner. And I want to encourage you guys. When I was first in the business, I actually did um what I did was I did, I called it Virginia Beach Speed Networking. And what I did was I met at the Beach Ford. They let me use the room for free. Um, they even provided food for me for free. So it was just like unbelievable. And what I did, it grew to about 100 people. And then it just got to the point where I was like, this is taking up so much of my time. And it I just decided it wasn't the right fit for me, but I really shouldn't have stopped it because I got tons and tons of referrals for it. And what I did was I, because with BNI, it was like two hours every single week and it was kind of the same thing. And I started dreading it. And I was like, what if we were in and out in 45 minutes, everyone comes in, you can have multiple people, not just, you know, one mortgage loan officer. Cause what if you didn't like that one guy? And it was multiple people. And each person just spent like a minute talking about their business. Um, and they could talk with each person. So they went from chair to chair. And it was just like a speed networking for one minute. And then it was like in and out. It was just more my style, you know, not right. like sit there for two hours. But I love your idea. Talk about how easy if they I love that you have people over at your house. And that is like you can really make that low budget. But if you don't want the headache of that, just going in the back room at a restaurant is a perfect fit. And just doing some heavy appetizers, everyone could buy their own drinks. I mean, you could really make, you know, doing some kind of networking meeting super, super easy. And you could do it, you know, once a month, once a quarter, something like that. 
Um, yeah. Like, and, and, you know, you said BNI and BNI is a great networking thing. I've done that for years. But as a realtor, like good luck finding a BNI that doesn't already have a realtor in it, at least not in any cities that I've ever been in. Because yeah. they only allow one of each thing. So it's like, oh, whenever a realtor dies, you'll get into the TNI networking group. Like so the only really way for us as realtors in so many times is really to create our own networking thing. I used to have a special investors group back in like 2008, you know, six, seven, eight, when, you know, the, before the market crash um, that, that I did the same kind of a thing where like you guys are all special investors and I would have appetizers and they would be able to trade in wholesale properties and stuff. And. I facilitated that. So it was like the they were my people that I would send out when I saw found a good property and I built up that database of buyers that way. So, you know, there's anything that you can do to get face to face. And I really, really, really think like of all the things that like this year with my whole marketing focus is back to basics. And I think that we get like with all of the the separation and you know, COVID years of 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 not being face to face. Number one, last year with connecting, people are re ready to reconnect and there's nothing stopping them now. And they're, we're missing that face-to-face -face interaction. We're missing, you know, writing handwritten thank you letters to people. Go back to basics, right? Like, wear your name tag. Always be branded like I got my little view property earrings on. You know, like everything that you can do to stay in it, it really makes true connections with people. So yes, you can do it at a restaurant if you don't want to do it at your house. But the intimacy of just inviting someone into your home is also, I think, like just there's something really special about that. Like people are coming here and, it, and a lot of people are, that makes them nervous. Like, oh, I just didn't have anybody at my house. It's not big enough. It's not pretty enough. It's not nice enough. And I guarantee you, nobody cares about that. Like they're just happy that you invited them and you had like, shared time together you know it could be just pizza like i'm having pizza on you know friday night pizza and would love for you and a handful of friends to come over and you know and 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 people it's it's having the opportunity to be able to have real conversations with people that we don't have when you're in a big group or in just a networking setting Does that makes sense yeah. yeah and i had a friend that did a walking club we're talk about cheap i mean talk yeah. about just getting people together, talk about no cost. She would get people at the Mount Trashmore and say, we're going to do a walking group. We're going to all get together. What a great idea. It actually cost you zero dollars. The only thing yes. is getting everyone together. Everyone's happy. Thank you for putting us together. Um, talk real quick and we're, we're out of time, but I want you to answer as a team leader, you know, a lot of people are really trying to manage their expenses while sales are a little bit down. What are you doing overall that are kind of helping you to get rid of, you know, we we all have fluff right now because it was, you know, such a booming market. When now it's time to kind of get skinny. What are you doing to manage your expenses right now? I cut out. Well, I also last year was such a great year. I saw kind of this coming um and so i was fortunate i paid off a whole bunch of debt like all my cars are paid for all of you know those kind of things i really cut out a lot of um a lot of print advertising and things that were costing me money that like really just were i wasn't seeing the return on um this is the first time in almost 20 years that i have not had a full-time assistant i have a virtual assistant still but I don't have a full-time in-person. And that salary was probably one of my biggest expenses. Um, and it was a really hard to, to cut that out. Um, and I know that I'll be needing it back like in the next few months or whatever. But I've, I've just like had to take a really hard look at a lot of things and just cut out a lot of vacation that I normally would take, you know, <laughs> and uh, getting the interior room instead of the window seat, you know, whatever. <laughs> and just just cutting back in general and um and really focusing on the things that actually are making me money which is that in person face to face contact well, stuff well and i will tell you you know one of the things the best decisions that we've made this year and we're offering it out to other people we've got a connection where depending on if it's a 
a medium level admin or a high level admin. It's just either $500 or $1,000 one time fee. And we're getting people in the Philippines for $4 an hour. I'm telling you, these folks that we have remote that are working, you know, at $4 an hour have been the biggest blessing that we've had because the problem is what you don't want to cut back on. These these folks can go in. We're using a program called Open Phone that we really love. So it's a phone number that you guys can get where you can both use it and it can come to you and it can come to the admin. They can do text messages. So you can put a list of all your contacts. And if you guys are interested in that, make sure you type it in the chat or um, email mp at canzel.com. And I just really, that what you can get accomplished with doing things like just all the texting and emailing and contacting. Oh, yeah. Kind of things. It's so worth it for you to spend $4 an hour to do that. That is a good return because you then can help they can help you invite people to all these different, you know, agendas or whatever little parties. Yeah. That you're My VA has been with me for three years now. Uh, I mean, he's in the Philippines. He has a college degree. He does all of my social media marketing. Like people are like, oh, you do such a great job on your ads. I'm like, thanks. It's really, it's really Matt doing everything. He does all of our flyers. He does all of my spreadsheets, the updates, all of those things, pretty much anything that can be done from a computer, I have my virtual assistant doing. And I mean, I, I, he's invaluable to me and also, you know, so much more affordable. So yeah, but, it, but if you could even get two of those people, think about the other things that you can constantly get off your plate. Yeah. Um, he does my marketing and recruiting emails. He does all of my new monthly newsletters. He does everything. That is like time consuming things that you do like on your own when you're starting out or whatever. But if you're an experienced agent and you haven't like had a VA and really started to utilize the the opportunity for that, like that's a great, great opportunity, Chantel, to and a great thing to offer to agents, like huge. Yeah. Well, this has been amazing. Lisa, tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you and send referrals your way if they and all the different areas that you cover again. So repeat that and where they can find you. Yeah. So um, my website is actually lisarichert.com. That's R-I-C-H-A-R-T.com. Um, you can follow us on livingincharlestonpodcast.com. You can also follow me on our view podcast, the letter R-V-I-E-W podcast.com. If you happen to be an RV person or uh, will be my market for uh, RV lot in Nashville and in Hilton Head is literally nationwide. So it's really great that you let me come on here and, and, um, and, and talk to your to your agents all over the country. Um, and if you want to call me, you're welcome to. It's 843-810-0403. And I appreciate it. Awesome. Well, this has been great. I Appreciate your time today and you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now. Thank you. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave a rating and a review so we can get this out to more agents. And tune in next week for another power-packed episode. This is the Millionaire Real Estate Podcast.